Before we start the podcast today, we're just going to take a, a moment to remember all the fallen NRL Supercoach guns. Payne Haas, Reese Walsh, Brennan P. Kura, Greg Marju, Mitch Moses, Nathan Cleary, Lindsay Collins, Scott Sorensen, Toby Rudolph, Royce Hunt, Dale Fanukin, Tane Torpiki, Tino Fasul Malawi. Hello and welcome to the SC Playbook Podcast, head of NRL Supercoach Round 4. I'm your host, Tim Williams, brought to you, as always, by Paddy and George from Morgan's Choice SCW. Spite, I've never seen anything like it. Madness. Absolute injuries, madness. injuries, injuries. One of the toughest oh. starts to the season that we've seen. We're talking about my new haircut, but... um. <laughs> 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 Did it myself. Yeah, super coaches, uh, super coach players <laughs> dropping like the hairs on your head. It heads, is. <laughs> oh, right, eh? I, wa- I walked into that one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's chaos, but you know it's all part of the fun in it. Like especially when your side's going all right, but it's just like jump on today. I was had a pretty pretty busy day at work, and every time I jumped on the phone to have a quick look, someone else was out. All bloody happening. We knew that uh, Brendan Piakura, we got word that he was injured today, I believe, at training. And just before we've hit record, sounds like he's out for around a month as well. It has just gone from bad to worse. Here to hopefully get through it in today's podcast and help people navigate one of the toughest rounds in recent memory, as mentioned, 2019 NRL Super Champion, Desi Creek. Desi, you're cruising. <sighs> I wouldn't say cruising. I wouldn't say cruising. I had a good week. I mean, when I say cruising, we, we I mean we all get lucky. Look at Guru's week. Yeah. yeah. Before I, I'll, be I'll deal with lucky. Guru tomorrow. Let's not mention him today. Uh, when I say you're cruising, pre-show, I said it's it's a week to boost if I've ever seen one. And you said I'm not boosting, and I'm like I'd use one last week. You go nut. Uh, it might have changed with the pair of Guru news, but you're going pretty well. Yeah. Um, no, I, sc- I scored pretty close to 1,200 um, thanks to Kiraz and Coruscant. They were two guys that a lot of people didn't own and I decided to start with them. So, yeah, I mean, going that big without having guys like Tedesco going, you know, 140, Val going 140, Dom Young going 150. Big school. I missed all of those guys and I still, you know, went pretty well. So, yeah, I guess, I guess sitting pretty, but, you know, carnage. Probably going to be forced into the boost this week. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll be alone there, mate. Uh, Spy, not a bad week for yourself as well. You brought in Latrell Mitchell, copped an absolute roasting for it afterwards, but uh, not too bad. Abs- I was ropeable, buddy, Friday night at ooh, about 9.23, roughly. Um, I had a really good week. Ended up 10.84, I think. Had a pretty good jump. Mm. Side set up nicely. Jumped onto Sledge Desi. And I bet check his score first. Like, yeah. oh. <laughs> I bought that one. Um, or played Desi Lad. But yeah, uh, Trell, just frustrating because <laughs> obviously watching him pretty close, not in the game at all. Not through, I thought, lack of effort, but just Bunny's utterly dominated. Just couldn't quite believe how that yep. unfolded. But he still got himself up to what what would have been 44 points in 70 minutes without the Simbin. I'm like, on track for 55 60, I'll take it. Then we got the doggies. Then he got binned, came back, had like one run <laughs> in the last five. And I just like, it totally ruined my Friday night. We always talk about, you can't let it get you down. It got me down. <laughs> <laughs> Any justification. <laughs> But I always has it. <laughs> well, talk, talk me, tell me why I'm wrong. Oh, and, um, I was waiting to, to hear what the positivity in Trell's 37 was, and we found it. We found it. And, um, but the very next day, I had birthday beers at home, flat screen out the back, and Karaz scored 120 odd, and yes. I was just like, "We're back, baby." So. Sunday's been good to us this year. There's been a few Sunday saviors for super coaches. It was Saturday. Sa- Saturday yeah. saviour. Sorry, but um, yeah. they're all good saviors. We'll take any yeah. we can get. Uh, Coom Stallions. <laughs> Ten, a thousand and four. So, I mean, not a great week. Probably, I mean, I went up in rankings to fifty-seven thousand overall. So, a bit above par, I suppose. But when you come from that far back, there's yeah, uh, not all terrible. It was there were some good scores, some good performances in there, some good caches coming through. I did cop an early season auto emergency, which was really deflating. When the news of Chan came through, I had him locked in as my fourth reserve thing, right? 80 minute, edge back row for the storm, going well. And then the news came through that he was out, it might have been late ish on Saturday. <coughs> and all my players on my bench had played, and I had Hammer and Bostock as well, who were both on the buy. So. Copped an AE of about 22, which wasn't ideal there. Um, but one thing I've said a few weeks in a row, happy enough with the team. I'm also happy that I've only used three trades so far this season because 
I'll absolutely be boosting this week with a lot of trades on the table, a lot of great options. And I think next week we're going to see a ton as well with players getting their second game in before uh, price rises. Something All else happened, by the way. What? I finally had a successful loop. Vice captain. Theory. I don't think I've ever done it. Yeah, so he got his 120. The way skippers were going, I was like, I just need to lock this in. Um, <clears throat> that always finds a way to screw me. I remember said it a couple of times before, but I did it. My last time I boosted was three or four years ago and I had Pappy as captain versus the doggies. Mm. Must had a massive VC score of 140 or something. Pappy scored four tries in 10 minutes before half time, legit, and scored 199. I was like, never doing this again. But I did this week and ended up 40 points in front. Um, and Tommy Turbo got pretty close to match. I was like, it's nice to actually have a win on that front because I'm not a big fan of doing it and I hope never to do it again because it's bloody stressful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, if you are looking to use the vice captain loophole, firstly, if you don't know what it is, if you type in, I think it's just like, what is vice captaincy loophole into Google, uh, it should be the top ranked story on there. The spy wrote it in 2020 when we got going and mm. it still is completely relevant, tells you how to do it. <laughs> Secondly, if you're looking at using the vice captaincy <laughs> loophole each week or at any point during the season, uh, on the SC Playbook website, we have a calculator which allows you to plug numbers into it to work out what a player needs to score to make it worth looping. Really, really valuable tool and makes that decision a thousand times easier. Also with us today, a bloke who, I mean, it's been, I was going to say an emotional roller coaster to start the season, but that would suggest that, suggest that there's been some highs. <laughs> Matty the water boy. Yeah, no, I? no. It's been bad from a rugby league standpoint, but also all of my South and Roosters players got under 50. It was just... <sighs> It was one of the worst nights of my entire life. It was so bad. Oh, um, so, yes, I ended up with like 1,050 only because I like, started terribly. Obviously, I cleared, but everyone had cleared. Didn't captain him. Mm. Um, thankfully, you know, Val Holmes got me over the line for the second time in three weeks. And, again, a couple of good scores from uh, Manly players and Ponga. But, yeah, not great. But there's a lot of people in worse positions. You know uh, what it is, Matty? Coach, so. <laughs> and it's not a roller coaster. It's the old big drop. Round one, you yeah. come in, you, oh, boom. Yeah, and I've been going since last May, and it's just <laughs> hasn't stopped. But it does go back, back up slowly, so <laughs> maybe it starts Friday. Mm, Not a bad score so. at all, mate. Guys, on today's show, we will be looking at the big topic of the week, Nathan Cleary replacements. What are our plans with Cleary? Who's coming in? Are we thinking about keeping him? We'll get to that shortly. There's also the centre wings this year are going off. 15 players in CT Dub are averaging 70-plus points. Today, we're going to look at the top four. We haven't spoken about it off air, but our top four ranked CT doubles we're trying to get into our team by around about round eight or nine. So taking into a lot of different factors into that one. Uh, team list Tuesday, talking points. Pia Kura, Tor Picky, hold or sell. What are you doing with guys like this? Our hot topics, would you be making a move like Levi or Lusick to Appy Corusau, who has started the year with an absolute bang? And once again, is Nico Hines a sell? We'll, of course, drop our round four trade and skipper plans and then wrap it up with a few listener questions. Before we get stuck into it, guys... If you're on the look, uh, sorry, I should say SC Playbook on the lookout for sponsors for the SC Playbook Podcast Network, our website, our socials, all that good stuff in 2024. So if you do think that your business could benefit and want to work with us this year, flick us an email at supercoachplaybook, that's full word supercoach, at gmail.com to find out a little bit more about what we can offer you. Boys, let's get stuck into the big business because it accounted for about 98% of questions sent in via the socials this week. Nathan Cleary gone for what is set to be a month of footy. They have the Roosters this week, you'll miss that. They'll have, they have Manly the week after, he'll miss that. And then the Panthers have the bye in three weeks' time. Typically an extremely fast healer, Nathan Cleary. So I would suggest that in four weeks' time, the Tigers match might be the aim. At a minimum, though, it sounds like you'll be missing three weeks of footy at $883,000. My first question to you, Desi, is with so much going on elsewhere and so many injuries across Supercoach, do you have to sell him or is there a case to be made that you could potentially hold on to him, save trades, you want him back in later? How do you see it? Look, I, I don't think you have to sell him, um, but I think you want to sell him. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's too much money in the bank to not go through with it. If he's back in four weeks, you just get him straight back in. Just make sure you have the cash spare in four weeks' time to get him straight back in. 
because you don't want to go a week without him, realistically. He's the best player in Supercoach. So I'm going to sell him, that said. Um, I think I'll probably sell him to a centre wing rather than a halfback. Mm. I think a lot of people have that idea since they're scoring so high. And it's a it's a matter of these the centre wings are in form, bring in the informed players. That's it's the name of the game. Um, that said, there's a case to go for someone like Luke Brooks if you don't have him already, especially since Manly play the Dragons this week. He could go big. Yeah. Um, same with Cherry for that matter. Um, but realistically, with Moses out as well, there's not many good halfback options. So I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Very, very poor options, particularly at halfback. Spy, how do you see it, mate? Is it one of the options where you go, too much money, too long out, use that cash elsewhere, or could you make the case to potentially hold on to him? I'm a bit with Desi on that. I don't think you have to sell. There's was literally chat yesterday of Ivan and Nate saying he could play next week. In any other scenario, I'd say, why on earth would you play a bloke with a dodgy hemi week before the buy? But it's Penrith. They love doing that shit. It's like, I'll just, we'll just play 80 or whatever, and he won't rest. Like, yeah. It doesn't make sense. They do it all the time. <clears throat> so there is a case to hold for this week especially, and just reassess next week, see if he might play, especially given the dearth of halfback options. Even some of the guys I quite like. So you mentioned Brooksy, he's going pretty well. He then runs into, I think, Penrith and Melbourne after this week, although it's a really good play this week. So maybe, maybe he's not as appealing, but it could still go well. <clears throat> Sammy Walker looks potentially really good after this week. He's got a decent little run. But he might not even goal kick now Suali's taking back over and just hitting them flush as. Mm. So I think I'm going to go to a centre or hold. That'll be probably something to weigh up. <clears throat> I think I quite like Roger to last with Sheck. We'll get to centres later, but I think him named at fullback. You need, for those that don't understand how to do that, you'd need a halfback in your centre position to do it so you can flip him down. A lot of us have Drew Hutchinson. So for me, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think I'll probably sell him based on the fact, even if he plays next week, which I feel surely it's unlikely, it is three weeks off or it's one in three weeks. So I'm happy to sell at that price and chase blokes who not only are scoring well, but also probably making your money at the same time. So happy to sell, but I can understand if you've got a strong side or whatever, maybe there is some reason to hold or hold a week potentially in recess. Even like, <clears throat> let's say worst case scenario, if you are selling, he comes back against Manly who have been really good this year at Brookie, so he'd miss Roosters game potentially, like surely to God not, but play Manly and then he has to buy, still missing two or three weeks. So it's like that's worst case if you are selling in a backfire, not backfires because he could go huge against Manly, but not the end of the world. I think at 883k he is a sell. The only case I'd have to not sell him is it a if by the end of the week we do get word you know he's a genuine chance for next week and you go all right maybe, <coughs> but it just seems ludicrous this early in the season for a, a player who, you know, essentially the apprenticeship hopes rest on. I shouldn't say that because Jerome Lua we've seen step up in the halves of both international and club level, so he can do a job. And you know you wouldn't pull a, put a line through Penrith if Cleary went, but it just seems madness to me with hamstring injuries. It's a lot of money to be carrying on your bench for what's likely going to be a minimum of three weeks out. What happens if it becomes four weeks? What happens if it becomes five weeks? What if the rehab doesn't go to plan or he tweaks again doing his rehab? All of a sudden, like that is money this early in the season where there are so many great buys, as I mentioned, this week. There's going to be a lot of good buys next week. I'm spreading that across my squad and I'll be looking at getting Cleary back in in four to five weeks. Yeah, I think, so it was around 17, boys, and you're a bit lower on trades, then I'd be really thinking hard. Way different later in the season. But it's money-making time, you're making your coin, there's good point potential out there. You've got real high quality, <coughs> like 18th, 19th, 20th men that you can plug and play. Exactly, so it's a different ball game. It's early in the season. Let me get this straight as well. Let me think this through. If you're going to sell Drew Hutchison in a month anyway, once you make some coin, mm. at the moment you're going to go Cleary out, Hutchison up, that's one trade. Then you sell Hutchson back to Cleary, two trades. You're already going to sell Hutch anyway. It's actually only one trade you're using on top of... It's not what actually you're two. Brain spy plays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like so it. you're not actually using two trades, you're using one. Yeah. So Drop the hammer if I'm wrong, don't. Are you, <laughs> are you going to be running Hutch as your starting half, bat? Oh, I've got Nico, so no. Next week you'll have to, though. Because Nico's under the buy. Yeah, that's fine. Buy, yeah. Yeah. He's probably in my 17 anyway, the way injuries yeah. are going at the moment. I agree. Best Cleary replacements. Boys, I 
am a little surprised we haven't seen a bit more chat around him. So uh, one more thing is important yeah. is if you are running Nico, you can't really hold clear if he had an AE next week as well. Um, because Nico's got the buy. Yeah, good share, which you mentioned. So that's no, you're not holding both, really. It's a sell, isn't he? We're selling him. Yeah. Um, I brought Luke Brooks last week, (laughs) fifty-three points. My round was yeah, Tiklong well enough, but needed a little booster. And Sunday afternoon, when Brooksy with that beautiful, I think he dropped Tommy Turbo underneath, split him straight through, try assist. He was my skipper. I'm going sweet. There's another fifty odd points. When that was pulled back, my heart just broke. I'm just (laughs) like, that's super coach. You win some, you lose more. Um, I'm a really happy Luke Brooks owner. He's dual half at 5'8". My plan is to switch him from 5'8 up to half back. I think he's looked fantastic, boys. You mentioned Spy, a couple of hard games to come. So he's got the Dragons this week, which is a great matchup for him. They do have Penrith next week, but it is out at Brookie. And Penrith are, I mean, as it stands, it's missing, out, potentially. missing Cleary, Fisher Harris, Sorensen. You maybe lump one or two more on, more on top of that, the way this season's yeah. going. Who knows? You know, it's not quite the same Penrith team that we've seen, you know, back into last year or that we'll probably see back into this year. Um, into the Warriors, tough one there. Titans, I think Brooksy's looked awesome. You're already an owner, Desi? I am, yeah. I thought more people would have been flocking to him. Spy doesn't seem that he's, way. He's 30-something percent ownership already. <laughs> like, I had a look at him crazy. and literally Penrith Warriors, I was like, oh, I really honestly think the Warriors' D is as good as yep. anyone in the comp there this year. Um I just wouldn't. If you already own, sweet. You're going to the Saints yeah. this week laughing, but I'd just prefer to chase someone with better matchups, put yeah. simply. But he looks good. Uh, How about his run on the weekend where he cut him up? Bit of footwork. He left. No pun. Went around Tommy Turbo. No, sorry. He went around Gutho and he didn't touch him. He looks it was un- lovely. He looks unreal. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, Desi, what are you looking at doing <clears throat> with Nathan Cleary this week? I'm selling him for sure. Who to? Um... I'm going to grab Dom Young before he rises too much in price. I, I know they have Penrith this week, but like we said, it's not the same Penrith team. Um, and he's going to – he'll rise a probably 80, 90K and become almost out of reach. You don't want to pay 750-odd for a centre wing this this early in the season. Kind of like Val already. He's up to 800-plus. Very tough to bring him in. Mm. I, like, Val was my number one option. I said that earlier to you, boys. I think he's – going to be the top scoring center wing this season he just looks insane um we all started with him last year no one did this year for some bizarre reason and he's just making everyone pay but yeah i think dom young at the roosters he's a big good shout for top try scorer for the season i know walsh uh, put that bet on so i think yeah dom young 150 with just one try two try assists but just one try imagine when he gets a hat trick it's coming. Spy, talk about Dom Young because he <coughs> is for coming off a 150. Obviously very popular. 150 last week, 50 in round one against Manly. Neg five break even at 640k. <coughs> Are you looking to get him in or what's your thoughts? I am. Um, There's a weird game on Friday. I don't want to speak too much about it with Matty over there, but he just ran a muck. It was like he was playing under 12s for a bit there, swatting them left, right and centre. It was crazy. I don't think you'll get that for a little bit again. Um, he, ha- he had last week, <coughs> Dom Young. Let me find it here. I think it was 14 tackle breaks yeah, in that game. Yeah, 14 tackle breaks in 18 runs. <laughs> that was crazy. It was drifting off, swatting what? like fire. It was crazy. Uh, yeah. That South just didn't end up physically. But um, for me, here's my question. I'll throw it. I want Roger to ask Shaq as well, especially his name at fullback. I could boost and get... Both of them, Dom, Roger, and the other trade we get to later. Or do I hold my boost and just cop? I would back Dom Young, probably not to get too much more than 50 against Penrith. Could be wrong, of course. But if he gets 50, I think he makes like 50K or something. Is the boost worth 50K? Here's a bold call. I yeah? think he'll turn up. do you think up. he'll turn up? I think he'll turn up <clears> against <throat> Penrith. I or think, I do think I Bruce just... has come out and... Blitz them. They look good. I think they'll smash Penrith. But if he does get his really try, he might statement. score 80 and therefore make like 90K. So I the think risk he could score upset. 50 this try against the Roosters with a try. Yeah. Like he could he could get 25. <laughs> and I've used a boost I'll, for I'll, like 30K. I'll, so. I'll go, I'll go sub 50, so. Des. No, nah, I just don't see it. I think I think Roosters will win this game. They're, they're odds on favourites now <clears> with Cleary out, a few, a few other injuries. They'll attack the other edge they as well. They look scintillating. Like, pe- that Penrith edge is untouched. They're all good there. 
Yeah. I'll go clear his side. I don't know. So I'll just like, I my thing is, supreme form. not sure I want to boost for him. If he scores 100, I'll lose 100K and be filthy. To answer your question, yeah. Spy, is a boost worth 50K? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Is, like, it, wor- like, is like, it worth 100K? I think it is. So, but like, 100K, yeah. 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 Here's, here's my employee with Dom Young. And in no world is he a bad guy <laughs> because best case, he's a keeper and he the Roosters continue to go on a tear. They do a bit of a job on the Panthers or, you know, Dom gets his 60, 70 anyway, makes a ton of money and, you know, he almost becomes out of reach. Again, we say this about every winger every year. Like, mm. well, not every winger, a winger every year and it never <clears> happens. You can always get them at some point, but you can do a lot of damage in the meantime. Asako. <laughs> yeah, but he, like, worst case, he gets 30, he makes good money, you can decide to keep him or you can trade him to... You know, a bottomed out gun. So you're not going to go wrong with the trade. Yep. In that demolition last week, you had 33 in base. I know you factor in power and you factor in things like, you know, offloads and certainly tackle breaks in the, in the case of Dom Young. He based 20 last week, uh, for those new to Supercoach, mentioned it a little bit, but that is your runs and your tackles put together, minus your missed tackles. So your floor, 20 points. Last year for the Knights, he averaged 63 points. He had just 23 in base, which is poor by any winger's standards in the NRL. And last year, he scored a stupid amount of tries. Still averaged 63. So, I'm not as convinced as you are, Desi. Boys, look at the averages. 2021, average 43. 22, 53. 23, 63. You see the pattern here? 2024, 20, 100. He's going to average 73. I can, um, see, I can see a 70-plus average for Dom Young. I just don't think the tries are going to stop. He they didn't a, stop last year, mate. He's, he's, he averaged yeah. 63. What changes? He's at the Roosters. Yeah. And they're, they're probably, you know, a good shot <clears> to win the comp. But they look really at good. At Brookie last Sunday, 50 with a try. So it's yeah, like there are question Brookie marks. Though. Manly, are, Manly are good this year. They are good. I know. There's so, plenty of good sides around. Yeah. Boys, it's a really interesting one. We'll get to more sand wings very shortly. Spy, have you touched... You've sort of touched on your clear replacements. Uh, my plan is <clears> to go... Got a big trade plan coming up later in the show. A lot of dual position stuff going on. Uh, but I'm planning on going Luke Brooks to my halfback slot alongside Nico Hines <coughs> and pick up Dylan Brown, who has started the season only okay, sort of late 50s, about a 58 average, I think, for the season. I just think with Mitchie Moses gone, some decent matchups to come by. It's just his show to run there. I hope so, because I started with him. Yeah. He'll you kick don't need about 23% <coughs> ownership, which is less than I thought it'd be. He has a really good kicking game, so mm. repeat sets, try assists off that. Hopefully just getting that ball in his hands a bit more. It's a good thing, isn't it? I've got it? some really good uh, <coughs> stats around him and no Mitch Moses and a few other things, which I'm going to save for beers and break even tomorrow. I don't want to share it all across both shows, so tune into that one with Guru and I going live at 3pm tomorrow. But, yeah, I'm thinking Dill Brown in there and... I think if you had Drew Hutchison, God, a lot can change in Supercoach in a week. Hutcho, who was people saying, do we get rid of him this week? And you were like, oh, he had a soft game coming up on the weekend. Give him a week. Then all of a sudden, people needing a backup halfback with Cleary gone, he becomes invaluable, even for a couple of weeks. So Funny old game. Funny old love it. game. Just quickly on Dom Young, because in case I forget later, you could just grab him now, as Desi said. Penrith into the doggies next week. As you alluded to, he's going to make a bunch of cash regardless. Yep. And then you can just post Doggy's game wired up and sell him down if you want. So I don't mind that either. Yeah. Or keep him, obviously. Matty, <coughs> Nathan Cleary. We were sort of speaking pre-show and getting through the man- mania of the team list. You mentioned <coughs> that potentially a Cleary hold? Uh, yes, but I didn't realise that they had the buy in three weeks. Yep. And that's kind of changed completely. I-, I was on the fence, put it that way. I was kind of querying whether it's an option, but yeah, no, that buyer, because there's no way he'll come back <coughs> next week, surely. So, and you're right, what you said before, like it could it could turn into more. You don't yeah. want to, Penrith aren't going to risk him this early. Yeah. So yeah, no, nah, not for me. Seems mad. So uh, the yeah. other one with that is obviously wanted, I mean, the way Lockie Galvin started, he probably becomes playable in your 17s. I'm still a little bit scared to do it, but I didn't want to be wedged with, if I was to go Brooks to half, I wasn't going to, wanting to be wedged with, Ethan Strange and Lockie Galvin at 5'8". You'll probably get away with it, but I feel much better with Dill Brown there. So yep. uh, that's why I'm going. Boys, let's talk centre wings. And 
we're going to reveal, and we haven't spoken about these, our top four ranked CT dubs that we're aiming to get in about round eight, nine, maybe ten. So not necessarily who we think are going to be the biggest averaging CT dubs for the season, but the ones that we want in our team uh, in the short-term future and where we sit with that because there are so many different options that you can go with. Desi, I'll start with you, mate. What did you come up with? Well, I've gone Valentine, number one. I just think he's... I know you said not, we're not talking, you know, end of season, who's going to be the best top scoring, but he is going to be, and I think he's just going to continue. His, his base is 40 to 50. Mm. Um, Cowboys look good. You know, I hate to say it, but they, they look actually like... They premier- finally won you they, over, mate. They finally won me over <laughs> as a genuine premiership. Everyone season. load up. Yeah. Desi, Desi likes him. Um, no, Dearden's <laughs> looking really good. He's yeah. looking dangerous. Um, fair credit to the lad. So, yeah, Val is number one. Um, number two, I'm tossing up between Kiraz and Lomax. I think they're both Ooh. massive options. Um, I know Walsh was saying Hamiso, Tabi Waifido, the hammer. And I just looked at his score. I saw 93. I saw he scored a hat-trick. 93 with a hat-trick. Look at Kiraz, scored 115 with one try. The, the one thing I'll say about that, Desi, is... We were at that game. It was a hat-trick for 93, and immediately you go, oh, jeez, oh, that's alarm bells. I would need to double-check, but two of those... No, no, it was definitely... Two of those tries were without line breaks and without tackle breaks. One was off Bostock, who popped it to him, and he just ran away, and I'm pretty sure the line break was already made. Yeah. There was also no tackle bust. The other one was just following a kick through, so... It, like That's the thing with <laughs> Hammer, though. He's going to get a lot of his tries as a support runner because he's so quick. He's just going to be blitzing mm. up the field, mm. following in behind. A lo- like, I don't see him making that many line breaks. He's quick, but he doesn't have that push through the line, that step through the line that mm. someone like Roger Tuovasashek, who's my next on the list, yeah. has. I just don't think Hammer has that tackle bust ability to yeah, no, that's fair, the mate. line by himself. He relies on speed to go around the players. He'll go around like we saw in State of Origin when he just ran around New South Wales. Speed creates tackle bus. It does, yeah, but not necessarily... Uh, because they can't the get way, hands on you. Yeah, not necessarily the way the Dolphins play, though. Yeah. No, I know what you're saying, yeah. though. I get it. And, and we'll get to Miles shortly, but Hammer hasn't made my top four. He's very... Hammer <coughs> could average 100-plus this year. He could also average 55. Yeah. Big thing about Ham, obviously low break-even, but he plays the Titans this weekend who are decimated. Uh, I oh, know. <laughs> That's alluring. <laughs> uh, continue, Desi. <clears throat> I've gone Roger next. I know the spy likes him this week. A lot of people, you know, including myself, said, you know, he looked really good preseason. Looks like a keeper, especially at fullback now over the next week or two. Mm. Um, yeah, and his base is enormous. You know, he just looks like Roger Tuovasashek of old that we know and love. Um, he looks so. I was going to say, he looks hungry. He yeah. always looked hungry, didn't he? Work yeah. rate was never an issue with Roger Tuovas' share. Yeah, and he's, he's just stepping through the line. That trial was insane yeah. in a clutch moment. Oh, straight around Hudson Young, who he was too inside of. Oh, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've got Lomax there as well. Forgot to really <coughs> dig into him a bit more. But, you know, the Dragons, they're not, they're not the best team. They're, in fact, they're probably the worst team. Um, but he's making 20-plus runs a game, albeit most of them are not over eight metres, as you boys said pre-show. But he's got the kicking. They'll probably still score a couple of tries each game, so it adds, you know, 12, 16 points to his, his floor. Saints score on the right, the right wing. That's kind of what yeah, they do. And they, that score, helps. they score in his position. So <coughs> I can see Lomax being top four centre wing. Pretty, pretty comfortably this season. Yep. And he's, I don't, I don't know how much he costs now, probably pretty close to 700K. So it's almost like now or never. I, I really don't see his price dropping that much <coughs> over the whole season. Not on my list, Desi. Not a knock on it. I just hate, and this burnt me last year with Jermaine Asako. I just hate going wingers, even if they're not over <coughs> the attack line, just in poor teams. I just want to chase the winger or the centre, gun teams can get easy tries. The one thing I will say about the Dragons and Lomax is they still put 24 points on the Cowboys on the weekend. The tries were there, the attack was okay, the goals yep. were there. So obviously a duck egg against uh, the week before against the Dolphins, but <coughs> week one they got points, week three they got points. So, yeah. Carry on. 
Um, yeah, my list, my list pretty it. much ends there. I mean, yeah. my, you've got Mars you there. I can speak all day about Mars yeah, you, but yeah. I'll let you boys go. Spot? <laughs> i got Val up top. I'm with you. The question around Val is, can you bloody afford him? Um, do you do it now? Do you try to get him later once you built some bank? One thing about Val is talking about money making. He's got Brisbane this week who do have a few out um, into the Titans. Sunday Arvo at Townsville next week. So if you can get him in... Do you just do a Dom Young type play? I prefer to own Val for two weeks, take the money on the back of his 150, and he might cash him in for like 950 in a few weeks and then sort of reassess later, heading into Warriors. Averaging, what, like 100 already or something? <clears throat> Let's say he scores well against the Broncos. Then he does go and put a score on, who'd you say the week after? The he Titans. Could, you couldn't sell him. How would you sell him? But then you could sell him for a million at some point. Yeah. So that's that's tempting. But I do, I do agree. I've never seen the bike run the ball harder than Valentine Holmes this oh year. How goodness. good is it? Um, great goal kicker, exciting team, combo with Drinky, hard to go past. Maybe I'll try to get him in, but just very expensive. So it means your other trades in the coming weeks aren't going to be as good. So it is going to affect your balance. Um, I had Dom Young at two. Now I'm just reconsidering a bit, but like the upside's there. Is his work rate enough in a tougher game? I'm not too sure yet, but obviously with Chucky's going well, forward pack really dominating, but Knights were outstanding last year as well. It's not like they were bad. They won their last 10 heading into the finals. Lindsay Collins is out this week. Uh, how many strains? Mm. He might be a few weeks. <clears throat> but I do think he's a good buy. Don't mm. get me wrong. Um, I just wish he wasn't playing Penrith this week. It's a pain in the bum. Um... Jacob Kiraz at three. I never quite know where to put him. I just know if he's playing, I've got him. That'll yep. be until he retires. Um, I just love the man. How good is he? Roger at four. Especially playing fullback with Chans in some doubt as when he comes back. To a peak, he hasn't set the world alight, although I really like him. Combination-wise, they might go with a Roger uh, if Chans doesn't return. So if you do get some extra games at fullback or Chans goes down, you're just slicking your lips as an owner. So I think... Pretty keen to lock him in because he'll do a job at left centre anyway. Uh, maybe a bit less upside at left centre. Well, no, maybe he definitely does. Yeah. But I think he'll hopefully get more and more involved as, as the show goes on. Yeah. Um, like Roger there. And the three I've left out, not due to anything other than their draws, are uh, Garrick, Tungo and Brian Toa. They're probably three I really want. They've just got a slightly tougher little period coming out. So I'm happy to come back to them in a month. But centres are stacked. Yeah, it's awesome because you it's can. Great. Everyone could have four gun centers who are different. It's great for the game. That's my thoughts about uh, all this injury carnage that has been happening. It's and particularly with everyone selling Cleary. There's just so much money that can be spent across so many different areas of squad. So, I'm hoping it really opens up Supercoach and creates a lot of diversity in teams because that's what we want. We don't want to own. 20 of the same players in a 25-man squad. So it could be a little silver lining, a blessing in disguise, I should say, for Supercoach and just to keep it fun. And we've had those years where it's like, oh, I've got money, we'll just pick the four obvious centres. Yeah. This year's like 10. So it's many. great. Boys, I've got Val Holmes at number one, 39 in base this season, goal kicking, you've covered him. Number two, even if he's not fullback, I love Roger. He looks phenomenal. Basing 38 per <coughs> game... He's going to play some games at fullback this season. Hopefully he gets a longer run there if, you know, I'm a Torpiki owner, potentially holding, get to that soon. But if Torpiki's out for a bit, uh, well, just this week and Roger kills at fullback, which he probably will, it's Roger. He will. He, he could get it's like, he could bit. average 70 in just base and power, <clears throat> like with his numbers. It'd be a bit Manu-esque, eh? Oh, Manu-esque with just a bit better ball playing, so mm. more opportunity for sort of for attacking points, I think. I don't think he passes much, but he doesn't need to. Yeah, no, he doesn't <laughs> need to. So I think uh, Tuvasa Shek is my number two. Uh, number three on my list, I've gone with... This is very form-based, but I like what I've seen from the Warriors this year, despite being only one from three. They're about to explode. Dallin Wittenius Lesnar. Coming. He was an absolute star last yep. year. His base last year, which was his downfall, was 25 per game. It's up to 31 this season. Small sample size. Maybe that continues. Maybe it doesn't. But a little bit more reassuring and far better. He's only scored the two tries this year. He had a try assist on the weekend. But two tries this year and he's averaging 70 points per game. So... I rate it. If Hugely. And, and again, because of a few of these other guys that have been mentioned already... I. 
I'm not that sure that many people are going to go there, but it's hard to forget what he did last year. So, look, the way the Warriors are looking at getting troops back this week, he's not someone that I'm going to prioritise over like a Val Holmes for starters, but... I don't see why Darlin can't do it again this year. SJ's the key to it all. If SJ gets injured, the other thing about his 70, no chance. Chance is he averaging 70? Yeah, chance was the key to, along with SJ, they to win probably, last year. They probably left four or five tries yeah. on the park for either Rocco Berry at right centre or him. Just yeah. from not oh having the ball playing man, fullback. Just those know. combinations So, there, like yeah. Darlin, Greg Marju, look, if we're talking four to five weeks' time, get Marju back from injury, one or two games, get a bit of a price drop. If the Knights can start to click and get their attack back, it'll come. It'll happen in time. I still love Greggy Marju and someone that's not going to be origin impacted. I could see him in my team in four or five weeks' time. Uh, and the Hammer's the real speculative one I've got there. Currently an owner, currently an owner of RTS as well. Started with them both. <laughs> Hammer looking excellent, certainly super coach wise I've said a million times, there's going to be lows, but there's going to be some highs. I think <coughs> there's going to be some 25, 30-point scores in him, but I also think there's going to be some tons in him. So... My decision will be if you can score well, particularly this week against the Titans, and you can go up above 800k, hold or cut. I can see myself going if Hammer can kill it for a couple more weeks, potentially to Val Holmes or someone like, you know, DWZ. So, few decisions to be made, boys. Let's rip into. We'll get through this quite quickly before we end our hot topics and a few other things. Guru and I'll jump deep into Teamless Tuesday tomorrow. Uh, but Lindsay Collins out for the Roosters, as mentioned. Terrell May starts. Good news for Big Bad Terrell. A few lesser minutes last week. Uh, the blowout scoreline. He's not going to need to play massive minutes in games like that. Uh, the tougher game, the better, I think, for Terrell. See, I actually did a pretty good job on him. Yeah. That's about the only bike. But yeah. yeah. Uh, Nathan Cleary out for the Panthers, as we know. Brad Schneider <coughs> comes in. Sean Kepi dropped from the Bunnies. If you jumped on him as an early season front row forward, sort of cheapy to mid-ranger. He's averaging about 31 or something. He was a sell regardless. <coughs> Brennan Piakura injured. Again, he just... It just can't happen for him, can it? The HIA in the first minute in Vegas, injured at training this week. The two games he's had back since Vegas, scored well, looked good. <sighs> Sounds like I think you were reading Spites. I just checked. Four looks like out. it is a month there. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? I guess you got to sell, don't bye you? Bye bye. Yeah. Sell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, obviously it's a sell. I'm just <clears throat> between all these injuries. Like, imagine people out there with Tino. There, they might have Mitch <clears throat> Moses in their side. They have Nathan Cleary. Oh, it could be so bad. It's there'd be again. I think we've all copped a bit of a rough end of the stick, but there'll be teams who have been obliterated by it. Yes. Ruben Cotter is another one who's in, in a bit of doubt, who's quite highly owned uh, with an ankle injury, <coughs> has been named. Um, but, yeah, I think you've got to sell Brennan Just Don Peacura, that's where if you are to buy a Val, for example, at 800 and whatever he is, if you get someone like a Roger, 200k less, you can then turn Peacura into a gun with that extra money. So, like, it's all, all good and well saying I'll get to get Val, but... Like, value is an important thing. If you get someone at 570, you can do a, a very good job and then another gun on the top of Peacura, spread those funds a little bit. So those decision-making. Yeah. Oh, it's just a matter of how much Val will <coughs> outscore yep. Roger over That's a what month. You gotta, that's what you got to decide. It, it could be 100-plus points yep. the way or, he's looking. Or it could be nothing. Like, that's that's the punt yep. you got to take. Well, just said, it sounds like Chan still could be a few weeks away. If Roger gets two to three weeks at fullback... I'm backing him hands down the top scorer for those weeks. Like, you've had to pick someone before the round starts. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be close. He's a lot cheaper. Uh, boys, <coughs> Zach Labart returns from injury for, for the Cowboys at centre. I believe that was an ankle niggle he had last week. So good news for his owners uh, with a price rise incoming. As mentioned, Ruben Cotter name. Tommy Talau on the extended bench for Manly. I think Tommy Talau, if he comes in and plays this week, I think on the left wing at Manly, I think he's going to be a great buy next week. I was at St Paddy's Day when that game was on against Chooks. Was he left or right? I thought he played right. Remind us left. making that up. Was left? Yep. Don't mind the right this year for Manly either, but either way, wing for Manly. That's a good thing, I reckon thing, you ought to be left. I reckon you ought yeah. to be left. Uh, no Josh Schuster still. Two games in the South Cup. Good news for Ben Trebojevic. Only played six drum minutes on the weekend. We'll get to him shortly. Jaden Campbell <coughs> returns for the Titans at fullback in place of Keanu Keeney. Dave Feeder named on the extended bench. All eyes on him and his return. Desi was getting excited <laughs> pre-show looking at that one. He, he attempted to go early, weren't you, if he yeah. got named? Yeah. Uh, Tino Fusua Malawi gone. Keenan Palisia starts. We'll get to him a little bit later as well. You know what, I'll do it now. 
Very interesting watch on the minute rotation at the Titans because there's 60 plus minutes in the middle mm. to be shared around. I don't know where they're going to go, but uh, still looking for someone just to plug a hole as my second front row forward, Cheapy Town Lolo this week, gone catcher. Palacia, his <coughs> name to start. Again, don't need much. I don't care if it's 35 40. Just plug a hole while we put out other fires in teams. But yeah, a massive watch on a lot of guys in that team. You know, Mo Fodawaka, uh, Jamin Jolliffe. So we'll have a bit of a look at that. Maxi Plath keeps his starting spot over Ray Stone, who returns from a head knock the week prior or before the bye on the bench. Plath, 278k, negative 11 break even, looks good, massive base. He's only available at 5'8, yet he's playing lock. It's pain, so hey. he'll get his jewel come round six. But, you know, you look at that cheapy 5'8 spot. It's Lachlan Galvin by length of Flemington Straight. So, mm. Uh, mm. a bit annoying. But, <clears throat> Plathy, by the time he gets his jewel in round six, he could be 450k for yeah. the minutes. Brown to Plath. <laughs> oh, <Ooh>. Don't. <laughs> uh, Tane Torpiki, as mentioned, is out. So, RTS is at fullback. Boy, he's a big one. Dylan Lucas, 18th man for the night. Kai Pierce, Paul... Locked in. You Get know. on. Uh, look, I think he's probably getting his 80 minutes regardless, <coughs> but there was some concern with Frizzell, a big minute edge player. Dylan Lucas, who was named to start in the edge round one, that maybe Pierce Paul plays 60 minutes. I think he's locked into 80 now. Oh, get on, boys. Love you that keen, Spy? He's first trade. Oof, really? The whole week, I'm like, how do I get him? I just want him. He looks the class act. He's about to put Pong away for a try. Hopefully next week when I have Ponga back. Uh, he's going to offload to him. It's it looks pretty damn good, boys. I like him, and he's still a lot of value right now. Desi, I agree. Yeah, I, I think he looks. You know, he's he's got that a bit of Sean Lane about him, big mm. rangy sort of guy. He just needs to get the arms free. Mm. Um, he's, It'll he's, come. He's not close. He's yeah. like he's wanted to offload. You can see it. He's he's like going. He's ushering for it, but Ponga just hasn't been there. You know, following through on a lot of the nights. Um, you know, potential offloads. Um, the Fitzgibbon combination of last year. Yeah. It, it's going to take time, yeah. but they were so in sync. It'll come, but it's going to take time, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Ponger a bit tired, Desi. That's another chat. A bit yeah. tired, but still, you <laughs> don't want to go without him. <laughs> Boys, Pierce Paul, <clears throat> I'm, he's a funny one. I think he looks okay. I think he has the attribute, physical attributes to be a superstar. And I think he could be, but I do think it's going to take time in the NRL. I know he got pushed off by Pappenhausen on a tackle he should have been making. It is such a big adaption to go from the Super League to the NRL, especially as a young fella playing big minutes with the intensity of our game. Super coach wise he looks incredible. Like he tackle bus, we know he'll offload, we know attacking stats will come. He's on the left edge for the night, exactly where you want to be outside. You mentioned him linking up uh, and giving the ball with offloading mm. to Ponga the other way around as well. Ponga putting him through holes. Yep. He said, Spy, there's still plenty of value mm. in him at 390k, break even of nine. Played the 80 last week, 67 points. He had 49 in base. All the attributes are there to be a great super coach player. St. George next week. A tough matchup this week against the Wars, but Saints next week. Is that the one he comes out and explodes? Yeah. Hopefully. My only fear, and any other week, if there weren't so, so many great trade options, and I certainly haven't ruled him out as a buyer this week, like I'd just be getting him in straight away, but we've got so much. My only, only fear is if there's a few defensive lapses, Dylan Lucas is sitting there, 18th man, bench, whatever it might be, just going back to the bench for 40, 45 minutes as he you know, gets... Gets the match fitness in the NRL, <coughs> but at the same time, Dylan Lucas returned from his head knock last week, came off the bench. He's now 18th man, Pierce Paul starting. He's obviously impressing in Newcastle. There is one thing to say. It is the Warriors in New Zealand this week. Break even nine. I thought it might be low for some Could reason. Wait. Cop 40K and just make sure next week. Don't hate that either. Yeah. And do another valuable trade this week. Yeah. I might do that, but either way, next week he's in. That's Got what I'm leaning to, to, and just yeah. copying the Local price rise. Yeah, yeah. He's in agreement today a bit too much. What's going on? A little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Don't want to upset the spy fans. <laughs> bit, of, bit, of, bit of debate over CT <laughs> on YouTube, boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boys, at the Sharkies, forward injury crisis. I don't 
know if any of them were too, too long, but a lot of middle forwards out. Britt and Nicker are still suspended for another week. We get to see a rookie and a bottom dollar. Kyle Iro start at centre. Exciting times. It is because they've been forced to move Sifa Talakai to the edge back row spot. Not good, for, not good for Mulatalo, by the way, combination with Talakai on the left there. Definitely not yeah. good. Yeah, uh, but good for Nico because he gets a whole running back rower back, which is very handy. Yeah, yes. Uh, Iro, <coughs> I suspect it will be a short-term solution to their problems, but it's an opportunity. He's got talent. If he comes out and kills it, we've yeah. got ourselves a very good cheap in a few weeks' time. Keep an eye on that one. Nick Kotrick dropped for Schiller down at the Raiders. Uh, unfortunate for people looking to earn a quick buck on him. Corey Horsburgh named on the extended bench for them, for the Raiders. If he doesn't make the 17, that's good news for Morgan Smithies and his minutes. Blaze Talungi. I Oof. mentioned, boys, uh, next week there's going to be a few good buys. Talungi, 204K, bottom dollar. Scored 67 last week playing centre? Wing. Centre. Centre. Um, I can't wait. Did you have you, ever, have you ever seen anyone hit Tommy Turbo so hard carrying the ball? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Named at 5'8 for the Eels with Mitchie Moses out. Whether or not it stays that way, I'm not sure. But, like, if he keeps starting 5'8 spot, because Mitchie Moses is out six to eight weeks, he's going to be another one coming in next Just week. thank you. Yeah. So many good buys. Yep. Another one who could be a good buy there, and Walsh flagged this as soon as he saw the news in our uh, um, SC Playbook chat. Bryce Cartwright, who was initially today said to be out for about six, eight weeks or so, got named on the edge. So I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Find out what's happening there. Uh, but Kelma Tulangi, very cheap. If he comes in and plays an 80 minute back row spot, if Cardi is out long term, maybe he's not after he got named. I do not know what's going on. Something's probably cropped up on social media while we've been recording, but it's a weird one. Uh, so, again, another one next week. Tell you what, speaking of people I wouldn't trust, Kelman Talangi. Defence. I'm, as you know, very reluctant to rag anyone who plays NRL because it's a hell of an effort. Yeah. He's defensively a massive liability, or has been traditionally. Yeah. So, in le- even last week, the one where Tommy went through, mm. that was him drifting across, oh not goodness, doing anything. That was he, such a big gap. He'd been on for like six minutes or something. So, yeah. no, but his attack's awesome. It but attack can you so far. It just it doesn't doesn't impress me. Guys, if you're yeah. lucky enough to be a homeowner, but you're finding your rates are going up at a higher click than Isaac Tungo's Supercoach price, fear not. Some of the numbers going around are pretty daunting, but there's help available with Paddy and George from Mortgage Choice SCW. Whether it's an investment property or the place you're living, the boys can run the numbers to work out how much they can save you on your loan. Before you know it, the repayments will look a lot less like Tungo's and far more like Poasso Pharmacillies. Usually, it'll sting you $129, but if you mention SC Playbook when you get in contact with them, it's completely free of charge. To do so, flick them a message on Instagram at patandgeorge underscore SCW, or you can give them a buzz on 02-9521-1611. No matter where in Australia you're based, email them more details in articles on the SC Playbook website. I was very reluctant to do this today, boys, but... I have to give him a shout out, not even because he's a sponsor, but just because he loves Supercoach so much. Paddy's ranked 113th overall. Whoa. He was ranked 57th for the week last week. He was messaging me Sunday night and he goes, he goes, how'd you go? And I was like, oh, 1,004. He goes, oh, I've got 1,300. Is that good? I'm like, oh. Are you joking? <laughs> yeah. So he's going all right. So maybe give it a few weeks and just let it rest before you get in contact with him if you're going to, just because he's just going to chew your ear off about how good he's at Supercoach. That'll drop inevitably. Probably a better time to do it. Boys, well, let's get in, uh, into our hot topics for the week. Our most traded in and out players. We will have already touched on uh, probably the majority of these guys already, but... Lockie Galvin, 204K, negative 62 break even. Is there any case to not get in this 18-year-old star spy? I know you're frothing at the bit with him. You started with him. Touche. Desi, is there any case not to, or have you just got to get him in? No, I think you just get him in. Um, I went out to Leichhardt on Saturday. Mm. Got to see him uh, in person, in the flesh. Um, he looks very good. You know, the base is there. He's making tackles. He's not. I don't think he's missed a tackle yet, which is just insane for a rookie. Um, he's throwing offloads. Um, the attacking stats will come as well. He'll he'll uh, he'll definitely get over for a few tries this season. Um, my friend, who's a Tigers fan, is calling him the Galvanator because <laughs> he he thinks yes. he's a Terminator sent back in time, not to save us from Skynet, but to save. 
the Tigers from extinction. I <laughs> love it. Save like save like art from extinction. Love it. That's so good. The Galvanator. Um, yeah, look, no, I think you've just got to get His him in. His base stats are incredible. Runs, tackles, yeah. And you oh, know what? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mentioned before that I don't want to be running him and, and playing him in my 17 just yet. He's 18. He just had two games in the NRL and scored both, well in both super match wise. Who knows? Maybe he could be a, a player. I nearly going to play him this week. Yeah, yeah so I will for sure. I've got an official apology as well. That's why I hate bagging anyone. I just went back on Decaro because I felt bad. It actually wasn't Kelma who got lazy. It was Luca Moretti. But Kelma did, but Kelma did over chase. <laughs> but good, he did over chase. Good save. Good save. Sorry, Kelms. <laughs> Big fan of the playbook, Kelma as well, so don't upset him. Yeah, I know. Uh, Boys, Appy Coruscant, 572k, <coughs> negative 22, break even, playing big minutes, got, I think, an early shower on the weekend or didn't go the 80 because they are putting a, a cricket score on the Sharkies. Obviously, he's a good buy. He's goal-kicking, big minutes, Tigers look great on the weekend. My question to you is, in a week with so many great trades available, we've just spoken to blokes that we'd want to get in, but, you know, we can only make two, potentially three trades this week. A lot of us own either Levi or Lussick. I, I would say, without checking, you know, it'd nearly be 90% of serious super coaches own one of Levi or Lussick. Both with a bit more money to be made in them. Are, are either of you looking at moving Levi or Lussick onto <coughs> Appy Coruscant this week, Desi? I've got Appy, so... Did you start I, with him? I did start with him, yeah. Oh, I'm I just, in a long right, I mate. sacrificed uh, <coughs> that round two, round... Was it round one? Or round, round one by, yeah. Round one by, I sacrifi- <laughs> sacrificed the uh, spot there. And just put in Levi. I think a lot of people did. And he slid over for one. So, yeah, I've, I've already got Appy, but I wouldn't put him at the top of the buy list. Um, I think Benji said he had gastro or something in that game as well. So, he, he's a bit under the weather at the moment. I mean, he still scored 105. So. Yes, he got 105 and <laughs> yeah. made 67 minutes with gastro. Yeah. How does that not put him That's top just of the standards. It might, it might take it out of him, though. I, I just wouldn't expect that much this week. That's the honest. standards Desi's setting this year. He's like, 105, that's right. <laughs> in 65 minutes. But you're right. I know what you're saying yeah. in terms of, like, if gastro is bad enough, it does linger a bit. But yeah. He, he's so good. He played so well. Spy, you and I, uh, whilst put it well in his weekly podcast, he's been handed the keys to the kingdom at the Tigers. All the attacks coming off him. He's looking brilliant. Spy, you and I are both very, very happy Reese Robson owners. Even happier now because the Cowboys are firing. The middles are rolling through. I think he got three tries. He's pretty easy ones on the weekend. Because of Appy and other things going on, He's going up in price. I don't think many people are going to own Reese Robson. So great signs for us. Uh, do you have Levi or Lussick? Went to Lussick. Lussick. So you went Levi him. to Lussick yep. last week. Yep. Told you not to, mate. But anyway, here we are. 40, 80K or something. Yeah, well, that's right. Um, are uh, you... Don't understand, does he? Same trade. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Are you, are you look... Well, here's what's wrong with it. Are you now looking at going Lussick to Appy this week? I don't need Appy. Now, um... No, Lussick's still got a massively low break even, so I'll yeah. take his cash and then I could have a look at Appy later. But to be honest, it would be Robson to Appy mm-hmm. if I wanted to do it. Um, just keep Lussick on my bench there. He worked hard. Looked to run the ball a lot, Lussick, which was nice. He, um, he da- every quick play of the ball inside the 10, he, he darted. So I'm happy with Lussick. Um, if I had Robson, I would not be selling him to Appy at all because you know the crowds are going to jump on Appy. It's going to make Robson a really good pod for you mm. guys. No, I don't think I'd do it now. Uh, but if Appy keeps what he's doing, he's going to be hard to ignore. Yeah, Appy's got a negative break even, a uh, break even of negative 13. <coughs> Joey Lussick has a break even of zero. When that 82 falls out of his rolling average from Penrith in round two, he scored 37 last week in 80 minutes, which is terrible. <laughs> if he can't back up with a 55... <laughs> 37 in 80 minutes. That's right. Spy, you've got a bigger work rate than that, mate. <laughs> Mine's pretty big, in fairness. Um, in no world is 37 in 80 minutes a good work rate or That's your good. floor, though, and you're getting up to 45, 50 most games. All right. Yeah, right. Anyway. Choosing back, to ignore the above. It, but yeah, carry on. Back to it. <laughs> the 82 drops out of his three-game rolling average after this <laughs> week. If he scores 37 again this week, if he scores 45 this week... His break-even shoots to about 50-plus, and he could be losing money. You look at Appy, who is scintillating. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it has to, has to make the trade, and I also wouldn't be going Robson to him, but I really like the <coughs> Levi and or Lussick trade to him. I definitely like it. I'm not saying it's a bad play. I just, it's 200K again. 
that's tied up in hooker that I sort of want to spend elsewhere. Strength Levi, and yes. centers, back rowers, Levi, all yes, of that. Lossick, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be rushing to trade out Lassik just yet. I don't mind Lassik. They Lossick. played Manly. I think Lassik will just probably peter around that 500 mark at some stage then we can reassess yep. but i don't really want to spend like 1.2 mil on two hookers at the moment at this stage of the season that's my big thing that makes me happy yeah because i'm also looking at just a few options and going all right <clears throat> with the money that Appy's going to make firstly he could be a season-long keeper at hooker i still think harry grant is going to be the best hooker in the game this year and i'd love to own him but firstly if Appy can get to like Maybe ambitious, but 750k, the way he's playing, it's possible. Uh, he could be a downgrade to Harry Grant, but if mm -hmm. someone like Jaden Braley gets that starting role once he gets back to full match fitness, could be an easy way to free up a ton of cash. That's how I see it. Anyway. Well, I was thinking just on that, that's Lussick to Braley for me, having to make about 250 yep. on that when it happens. Um, I just don't want to spend my money on two hookers as much as not owning Appy worries mm -hmm. me. Makes um, me happy. Let's just see if, as you said before, can the Tigers back it up? We'll find out, but happy did look very good. Goal kicking hook. I need 22 break even. Thank you. <coughs> uh, boys, Hamiso Tabuai Fido, a bit sad about in this podcast, fourth most traded in player. 600K, no, a break even of one. Spy, you mentioned Val before. You mentioned <coughs> Tuvasa Shek. Desi, you've said a fair bit about Hammer. What do you think of him? Do you, do you like him as a buy or not? Spy. Sorry, I thought I said Desi. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Desi spoke about him. Yeah, I, this week I really do. Yep. Break in with one, got the Titans, love it. Playing for two weeks, reassess. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't choose Roger or one of these other boys over him. So but many good options. If you wanted to go Hammer, I think he's he's not going to be a bad two-week plug. And then take his money and either keep reassess him keep goes. him or sell. But yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, I'm with you. I'd, uh, very happy owner. I... I think there's probably better buys than him this week. Uh, I'm just going to reassess whether I think he's a keeper or not in two weeks' time, basically. S Lovely to time. own heading into the Titans. Yeah. Arvo match, I think. Could be wrong. but 5.30, yeah. I believe. That'll do. Well, it's James Tedesco, 795k, <sighs> negative eight break even, averaging, I think, over 100. Desi, Teddy's back. It's like a phoenix rising from the ashes. <laughs> That's what he looks like. You know? Yeah, good. He's, a, he's the man of steel. He's just... You know, people were writing him off last season. I kind of stood by him. I was like, he's, he's you know, been the best player in Supercoach for many, many years. You can't write off a guy like this. He just, you know, he was shaky under the bombs a bit, um, had lost confidence. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't passing the ball particularly well to his outside man. And I think he's just completely changed this season. He's he clicked slick. into gear. You know, he's busting tackles. He's scoring tries. The Roosters look good. Teddy looks good. I think he's a massive trade-in option. Yeah, I absolutely yep. nailed my 2024 round one starting team in 2023 yeah. round one. I started <laughs> yeah, yeah. with Teddy and Val Holmes, and they both started poorly. I'm like, oh, God, it'd be nice. They were 12 months late. Teddy. I mean, si since I traded Val out about round 12 before Origin <laughs> last year when the cows were missed, he was missing something like four or five games because of Oxygen Origin. He's turned up in about three out of four games in that time since then. Healing it. She looks good. Um, break even of four. He's no, it was good last week yeah. when I bought Trell over Teddy. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> He'll make up for it this week. Yeah, anyway. Play fullback roulette. Would you? We'll would we Don't buy him? Like I think there's more important. Like I've got um, what, I've got Ponga and Turbo, <clears> and they're not going anywhere anywhere fast. I'm happy with both of them. Both a little bit under what expected, certainly Ponga, but Ponga bounced back with a good score on the weekend. Uh, We're not buying him for Tommy this week. You just couldn't against <laughs> Saints. I'd, I'm so confident in saying <sighs> it's hard because of Origin, but at l the very least up until Origin 1, if mm. Tommy stays fit, he's not leaving my team. Not a chance. I'm actually having a little look at Tommy out against Penrith in a couple of weeks. We'll get to that <laughs> next pod. <laughs> and you'll go, oh, that makes sense, actually. Number four, Man. most traded out, Tane Torpiki. Bit of a tough one because he's been going so good. We've had this one ripped from underneath us because he played, <clears throat> I'll get the numbers up, but it was something like 47 minutes on the weekend. He's been knocked out twice. 50 minutes for 35 points no, in he's base. Been, he's been knocked out. No, yeah, first game HIA as yeah, well. Yeah, he's been knocked out twice. But came back on. Yep, because I played him all three games. Mm. That was my Friday night. To a peek into trail, I was a frustrated man. Um, 
his tackle busting machine runs a lot. If he could just find his ball playing on that edge, he'd be an absolute weapon. He would, and, and even not like on the weekend, he had thirty five in forty seven minutes with twenty seven in base. Yeah, he's tracking for fifty plus again oh. without anything. And now, even if Chance is a couple more weeks away, like he's given Roger a sniff at fullback. Like good luck getting that back. I know, right? I was wondering, like, he's such good footwork. Is there any chance he comes back on the wing? bit smaller, isn't he? That's the only problem. But Montoya, it's so one of his reads on the weekend. Mm. It was like two a peaky time. Mm, yeah. It was just more of like just a small. more of like a hope. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Spy, the question, break even of thirteen this week. It just feels wrong selling him. There's so much more to get out of this bloke, but I don't know if we're gonna get it. Yeah, I've probably in a position where I can hold a week and just, yeah. just let things play out I'm to make sure. Because you'd hate to sell him, then he gets named to kill you. So with all the injuries, I think you're probably happy to sell your other injured guys. The other thing Rest is, on the other thing I mentioned about, like you know, you give Roger a sniff. Good luck getting it back. They knew how good Roger was before round one, and Torpicky was the chosen fullback. Yeah, and you know. up until last week. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I would like to give him another week, <coughs> and if he doesn't get picked next week. I'll be able to move him on. But there's particularly with all these injuries, clearly Piakura. Next week you can go to a peaky to buy his telling. Yeah. What's his so, name? Buy yeah, his telling yeah. Yep. Desi? I'm selling him actually. <laughs> um, finally going against the grain this podcast. My only two injuries are the two guys you just named, Piakura and Cleary. So um yeah, I I just don't think we'll see him again, to be honest. Something just tells me he's he's gone. Um so yeah, I'm just going to trade him probably straight to Dom Young. Mm. That, that's my plan of attack, yeah. Boys, Nico Hines, 862K, break even of 121, fifth most traded out player. It was looming as a very difficult decision, hold or sell Nico this week. I didn't want to, but I could see myself just going, oh, I might have to do this, particularly with the buy next week. Now that Nathan Cleary's happened and all, there's all these other injuries that have come up out of nowhere, he's a hold for me. I'm definitely holding. Outside of all that, he's just lost his 120k. So at 970, I understood the sell, and I yep. was actually close to doing it. Now he's back to 85, which is like an 85 average on the season. I mean, not surely he's going to average 80 plus, but if it's Nico. All he has to do surely, is 80 plus, surely. and he, he holds his value. Much. We've seen a couple of those big games. They'll come at some stage, hopefully. An 80 plus is a stroll <coughs> down Cronulla Esplanade for yeah, I know, Sunday right? afternoon. Last week, nothing went right. Sharks really dig cop a fair hiding from the Tigers physically like they just weren't really in the game Nico still ran the ball a lot especially early in the game he's taken him on I don't think he's had a try or try assist this year yet it has to be coming I hate it? that they're missing so many forwards because their side's so weak and it's not going to help him but <coughs> I'm holding it doesn't mean I love this week by any means I nah. just mean I'm happy to hold and wait for that to the come to fruition Nico returns you've lost the cash happy just to lock him in now and keep him Absolutely. Boys, well, last one there, most sold, yeah. number nine, Benny Trebojevic, 314K. Yeah. This was obviously done, it was done just before team list. We did know the the injuries that had happened largely. There was nothing new in team list that we didn't know that hadn't come out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday sort of thing. So it's still be pretty highly sold. Benny played, I think it was 61 minutes on the weekend. He only made 37K last week. His break even is out to 39 it's got to be bigger issues, doesn't there? One massive point on this as well, the whole right edge of Parramatta, mm. sorry, their left edge got attacked. It's not Benny's edge. I didn't actually play him last week no, based on I, that because yeah. they just didn't go there. They didn't have to. They just kept attacking the young centre, new winger, Sean Lane next to a new centre. Let's see what happens this week when, you know, it's back to a normal game. Who they got this week? Got Dragons, anything could happen. Yeah. I'm not saying I'd play him this week necessarily. You could, but let's just let it roll out a bit in a normal game where they're not attacking a whole new edge on the other side of For the field. For those reasons mentioned, I don't mind him as a play in 17s this week, particularly yeah. like <coughs> if I'm holding someone like a Pia Kura or, or a Torpiki because I've got other players I can trade out, I'm happy to play him for one week, if hopefully 60 minutes, hopefully 80 minutes. I we saw play. around one how good he was, yeah. that was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually really like, there was also people selling Sean Lane this week. He's playing 80 every week. Injury impacted last year. All right, he's not hitting the heights we'd hoped for, but with Mitch Moses out, Dill Brown, assuming Dill Brown stays on the left, I really hope he does. And yeah. no reason to suggest he won't, but you never know when a new player comes in if they're, you know, they're particularly dominant on a certain edge. Um, but with Dill Brown getting more ball, it's got to be good for Sean Lane. So happy there. 
Boys, trades and skippers for NRL Supercoach round four. Desi, we sort of touched on a little bit. What are, what are you doing, Des? Yep, so I'm going to trade out Cleary, um, move Drury Hutchinson <coughs> up to halfback to mm. fill that spot, um, and then move, um, oh, what's his name, the Raiders guy, 5'8". Strange. Strange, <coughs> down into, um, into centre wing, bring in the Galvanator. He's coming in. Oh, yeah. Um, and then bringing in Dom Young as well. Uh, Some big plays. Are pro- you I might boost as well. I'm undecided yet <laughs> since I'm not sure if it's in my best interest. But if Piakura is out for a month, mm. as said, then I will probably trade him to Amole Olukawatu. <laughs> and triple stack man. Because I think they're looking very good. He- that simple. He's got Plus. some big ones coming, no more. Like, he looks so good. Spite? Oh, honestly, after that chat, boys, no idea. Let's see. Uh, my targets were obviously Pierce Paul. I want, I'll want. i get Roger in, definitely. I've got to play around with who I want. Maybe a Dong Young type centre for, uh, well, it won't be clear. We'll have the cash for Cleary. You have to have a real good sit down tomorrow night and reassess everything. So you're getting rid of Cleary. <coughs> Cleary to Roger, which leaves me yep. like 450k. So you've got one yeah, locked in. That's one Are locked in. Are you looking in. at boosting, do you think? If you nece- used to boost last if week. If necessary, yeah. So my first trades of the season last week. If necessary, I do. Just looked over the right here. K Ponga will be back for me next week, Desi. Hopefully at 130k discount. He's got Saints, so that'll be one trade next week. And the young para fella probably. So we'll have a little look at next week as well and decide from there. There's also a lot of questions around people <coughs> using their second boost and saying, is it too early to do it? Um, you know, I keep saying, if you need to boost, boost. Don't force it. But if you need that trade, with all these injuries happening and a lot of great buys on the table, largely, you know, a lot of them as a result of injuries, it's a great time to boost. And, yeah. you know, we know that round sort of two, maybe round three, if you haven't got your team right, it's a good time to boost early in the year before these price rises occur. The next two weeks, there's going to be a lot more good buys, a lot of cash generation opportunities. So I personally think... You know, while it's not probably ideal to have used two boosts in three rounds or whatever, I don't think there's a problem with it. I'm pretty happy to boost this week and next and just lock it all in. Be three early boosts and then I will try and hold, but I don't mind doing I'm that. I'm a genuine chance at yep. a boost. Th- I haven't used one yet, but a, I'll be boosting this week and then potentially boost next <laughs> week. Uh, my trades, boys. So get Skipper this Tommy, by the way, definitely. Skipper Tommy? Yeah, yeah. Desi Skipper? Yeah, of course. Tommy. <coughs> I'm also Skipper Tommy. Doesn't leave many VCs, unfortunately, but Tommy against the, the Drags, 5.30 win stadium. Sorry, that Titans-Dolphins game is 7.35 on Saturday. So I'm going Tam Lolo out. Thank God. Um, Palacia shifting up to front row. I think starting without Tino there, I'm happy to just plug him for a week, trade him <coughs> next week if need be. He'll have his first price move this week because of the buy. What have I done here? I've done so much. Um <laughs> Clear out. Ben Chaboyevich has gone to the back row. <coughs> Ethan Strange has gone to centre wing. Lockie Galvin in at 5 8. So I've gone down the low low to Lockie Galvin by four different dual Love changes. It. I like it. Love that. Um, Danny <coughs> Levi to Appy Coruscant. And I've also currently gone Nathan Cleary to Dylan Brown. So. As mentioned, with the nine break even to Pierce Paul, I'm thinking maybe for next week there, Talungi massively on the radar, and as I said, I could be using two boosts in, in, in two weeks here. Um, Matty, what are you looking at this week so far, mate? Yes, so before all these injuries, I had a beautiful plan, and it was going to be great, and it was, and I'm so spewing about it, but yeah, I, I haven't really land on anything i'll have, have mm. to do some research as you all are in the next few days but we'll facetime tomorrow night mate. yeah <laughs> sweet sounds good i'll definitely be um brushing cleary and then moving brooks like but then do i move brooks up to halfback because i need to get galvin as well i can move strange like i've got a lot of options i also want to upgrade one of my hookers to abby Coruscant. so i'm very undecided at the moment but that's where my head's yeah. at and skippers this week uh, Vice Captain uh, Val and Captain Turbo. Nice. I yeah. think Cowboys playing after them. No, they're not. No, no. They won't. They're, they're the, game the game before. before. Yeah. Damn you! Give it to him, Matty. Not an idiot, Damn Timmy. <laughs> Give it to him. God, idiot. <laughs> Boys, few questions before we wrap up the podcast for this week. Question from Fisher. 
With Mitchie Moses out for eight-ish weeks, does it make it gutho season? <laughs> He'll get the goal kicking. I mean, no, not for me, but you can see him averaging awesome over the next six weeks. Can't he you? always does well without him. Yeah. yeah. It's gutho season. Not only sure. the goal yeah. kicking, but... He has been kicking, though, not going that well. So I wonder if something's up. Yeah. He's got 30 on the weekend and kicked three goals or something. Mm. Mm. But, yeah, every, every chance. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're sitting here in a month going, do anyone know just Gutho's actually averaging 130? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, not for me either. Question from Peter, all this chat around halfbacks. Is it time for the Chad to send it? Three-round average of 59.3. <laughs> no. Brisbane, Titans and Eels next three rounds. Low break, even. Desi, is it Chad time? It's not Chad time, Peter. Spy, Chad time? It's not Chad time, it's drinky time. Better Peter, <laughs> it's not Chad time, man. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Question from Taylor Goodall, asking straight C on the hammer. Not a question, he says, just an emphatic statement. Boys, Titans match up, hammer on fire. Desi? Good luck, sir. Good luck. Not if you've got Tommy against Saints, but I'm sure I'll have a crack. I not. am an owner, Taylor, <coughs> and there's not a chance I'm going to put... I'd go grey by the end of the weekend. The old NRL bounce back there. is a factor. You get belted week before, you have to be like... Desi Hasler. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's... Bounce back factor, enormous. Yep. I mean, even this season, we've already seen what happens in the space of a week and then another. Dragons, week one, awesome. Week two, punished. Uh, Tigers, week one, smashed. Week Especially two, early in the year when awesome. guys are still up. Chain, things yeah. change so quickly. <laughs> Uh, question from Jacob Blocker Williams. Love your stuff, guys. Thanks, Blocker. Is Smithies, Morgan Smithies to Kai Pierce Paul sideways? He said, surely Big Red coming back to the Raiders, it only hurts Smithies' work, and KPP is a gun playing 80 minutes. So obviously, Big Red, Corey Horsbrad, not named in the 17, could easily come in come game day. Uh, Desi, do you think Smithies to Pierce Paul is sideways? or And talk to us about Smithies as well, because. Few lesser minutes, I think, on the weekend. Nothing bad. Maybe 67, 65. Work rate down a bit. What do you reckon? Yeah, Smithy's, I don't know. I, I, I haven't really gauged him that much, to be honest. Um, There's nothing to gauge. He's yeah, just a toiler. He's, yeah, he is. He is. So I, I guess you would say it's not sideways. Mm. It's an upgrade. KPP's got a way bigger ceiling. He's taken the carries. He's an edge back roll for one. Um, and he's he scored 67 or 50 odd in base, whereas Smithy's is just getting. You know, 35, 40 in base. So it's an upgrade. It's not sideways. But in saying that, I wouldn't do it still. Mm. I don't hate it. Think about Smithies. I don't quite know. I'm really keen to see what he produces the next couple of weeks to see if he's just going to be someone we move on or hold for a while. But, I mean, KPP's value right now. So, look, I'm not, not a, totally against it. Uh, yeah. Uh, not is there someone else you could sell though with the injuries? That yeah, would be what comes I to know. mind like, for me. He's, he, <laughs> as you said, it's not sideways. It is an upgrade. But there, he's just, in no way is he problematic, Morgan mm. Smith is. Like, unless Corey comes in and takes big minutes off him, he's just, there's still going to be money to be made. You do a little job through the chaos yeah, and then do it. But yeah, exactly there must be right. someone else you can yeah. sell would be my thoughts. Um, boys, a question from Rory O'Malley. Lads, is Galvin a must-trade in this week? In theory, yes. But if you get to part two of the question, 5-8, yeah. I have Dylan Brown against the Tigers with no Moses, and I have Metcalf kicking goals and scoring well. I think Metcalf's averaging mid-60s. In that situation, there are other really good cash generation opportunities. Like, you know, you don't need really trading that combination at the moment. Me, um, Galvin's only available at 5-8, Desi. Is he a must for, for Rory? Yes, the Galvanator is a must-have. He's a Terminator sent back in time to save the Tigers. <laughs> Who would you trade for the Galvanator? Metcalf. I would trade Metcalf. Yeah. I think SJ will, you know, he'll get the kicking back soon enough. You want to flick Metcalf sooner or later. Brown is a keeper. I'm going to look to get him in as soon as possible. Spot? I think you've got to get the old Galvanator as well, personally. Just easy money, good play. In a way, it's, it's a real shame it's annoying, for anyone though. in that situation because Metcalf's been a terrific pick-up. And he deserves more. Sure, he's got him through a tough period um, of like questionable five eight options going around, but deserves more cash for maybe. I think I'm with you. I think you ought to go Metcalf to Galvin. You could sell Brown if you want. No. He hasn't set the world alive. As Desi said, it. I just think like he he was playing he's lots a of second Brown. phase. They're playing lots of offloads. You want to play yeah, that's a good call Brown too. Is, Brown is gonna you yeah. know 
he'll, he's not going to play Origin. Play. He's coming, isn't he, at some point? Barring injury, barring injury, he is a season long keeper. I'm more just meant he get like 500k for Galvin and then do what you please. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. 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 calf for me, I do agree. Yeah. Um, question <coughs> from Burner. What are your thoughts on trading at Taylor and May to Hammer or Dom Young? Taylor and averaging 50s. Come back to the pack a bit in recent weeks. By he's had you. two weeks where the opposite edge. Got totally decimated, and they just went to the right with Tungo. So, nah, I just want to see they, what they, he does they in had, the uh, game. They had players, they had, I think, a centre or a winger <laughs> injured both weeks. The two teams didn't have a back line, outside back to replace them, and Cleo just went, thank you, and went to the other edge. Taylor May could have just sat, sat and watched yeah. and done his shoelaces for half yeah. of those games. So. Don't trade Taylor May. Don't panic on that. Again, he's, he's the <laughs> least of your worries. Boys, last one to wrap it up, and it is a good one, and I'm putting you on the spot here. I haven't actually shown you this, but I didn't show you. I don't show you questions any time, but Lockie Patton. Gents, got a left field question for you. Who's your favourite commentator currently? Brackets, Rabs will forever reign supreme. Indeed he will. And which ex-NRL player is your favourite commentator? I feel this makes watching your game so much more entertaining when you get the right one. Spy, I'll start with you. Whoa, talk about it on the spot. Um, <coughs> I've been a big Vossi fan for a long time. Mm. Some annoy me a little bit of weight. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not the only one to say that. I love I love Vossi too, but he's also annoyed me a little bit. Oh, he just something's going on the last year yeah. or two, but I he love his good I love his passion for the yeah, game. He's great. A uh, bit of a random one for you is I quite like Andy Raymond when he gets a crack. Mm. I reckon Andy Raymond is good. Um, in terms of the others, you guys talk and let's have a little think about it. Give me yours. Desi? You know, people are going to hate me for <laughs> saying this, but I love Baloka. <coughs> oh. uh, he's <laughs> lovable. He's so bad that he's good. He's lovable. Yeah. yeah. He just comes out with some absolute <coughs> rubbish. You're like... What is Blocker doing? Commentating so NRL. I was playing a drinking game at my birthday on Saturday, and it's basically any time Blocker says something's going to happen, like, oh, it's definitely a try, and it's not, you have to drink, it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so lovable. Oh, no, he gets away <laughs> with it because he's the, clearly a legend of a bloke. Yeah. Um, I've got another left field one for you, heaps left field, mm. but and I'm not going to go into limitations my favourite commentator, but... I reckon Matty Russell is yes. one of the most underappreciated callers in Russell the Russell and Raymond. And, and people would sit there and go, who's Matty Russell? Well, that's the point. That's why like, I like Callers him. are meant to not be heard and not go, oh, that was, that was terrible calling or that was annoying. Or that's like, he just goes in so under the radar, calls the game so well, has good opinions. I love Matty Russell. While we're on it, I haven't had many blarps this year. <sighs> oh, Commentators no. calling players who they clearly have an affiliation with. And then it's like, that is unbelievable. I'm like, mate, you just kick Chase downtown. Like, <laughs> you don't have to talk up a superstar. They'll let you. Yeah. You don't have to be like, it happened with Reese Walsh the other week. And he kicked along and he goes, he's got himself right back in the game. Like, mate, you don't have to make up stuff for Reese Walsh. Just call the game. It's going to happen. It yeah. frustrated the hell out of me. Shocker. But, yeah. Before I throw to Matty for his, <laughs> because I will forget. I forget to say this each and every week. But uh, wherever you're listening or watching, like, subscribe, do all that business for us. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, please will be much appreciated uh, if you are on what do we got if listening on apple spotify you can subscribe as well uh, it helps a lot on our end so please jump in and do that let us know in the comments of youtube who your favorite commentator is favorite caller favorite ex-player caller maddie i know this is a, a hot topic for you and one you feel passionately about yeah I, yeah I, I was actually gonna say maddie russell really? which is hilarious Good. like again nice. he's not he's not my not my favorite. My favorite is Vossi. I love Vossi. He's great. I, he's just the man. I know he drowns himself in hyperbole. Like he just yeah. says stuff that just doesn't exist. But I love him. <laughs> I love his passion. I also love. There's certain players. I can't think of a current one on the spot. But there's <laughs> certain players where, like, remember Charlie Gubb? Yeah. yeah Do Charlie I remember Gubb. Charlie? Like, not one commentator would ever call him anything <laughs> outside of Charlie Gubb. Yeah. It was always here comes Charlie Gubb. It was never Gubb or Charlie. And I, I just love that, like, there are certain players in the history of the game that are like that. I can't think of any at the moment, but there's, there is definitely a few. But to answer your question, uh, Vossi for me. Yeah. No, nah, he's very good, Vossi. Boys, let's wrap <coughs> up a big show for NRL Supercoach Round 4. Spy, good to have you back on the, uh, the desk, mate. Thanks, boys. Two things to add. Very chatty today, I know. Um, I'm going to do a reel on Insta this week with my top five countdown favourite commentators because I actually feel very passionately about this. I've been off into a few birthday beers the last eight days, so I've been a bit quiet. And secondly, ever since I came to the studio, my legs have just been dangling. I didn't realise how uncomfortable I was, so I just looked down a minute ago. There's two yeah. cases of bloke beer 
game changer. Shout out to to Den and Kemp. Yeah, uh, clever man. But possibly his best brainchild of all time Brilliant. has been putting cases of beer where your feet normally dangle. I just noticed like 10 minutes ago, yeah. you probably saw me got happier. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, if you are listening in, go out, get yourself a case of bloke and a beer, midi, full strength. Go to the bloke website for store locator if you want to try it out. Great drop of beer, that one. Desi, thank you, mate. Pleasure as always, boys. And to the people out there, don't you dare take the captain off Tommy Turbo this week. Yeah, it's yeah. Be. This is the week. Don't do it. 150 plus. Okay, tell me, Easter sad day. First game, so I'll be stinging for a beer come 5.30. Let's do it, Tommy. I dare say we'll be back next week. Bit of a weird week with Easter Monday and footy <coughs> on. The bloke podcast we're recording, I believe, on Tuesday, which means Maddie will be under the palm. We'll probably be recording this a bit later on Tuesday night. So if you're panicking later next week and it comes out, it will be out next Tuesday night, maybe just a little bit later. Guys, have a ripping Easter. Good luck this weekend. We'll see you next week.